What's up guys, this is Star Blue, a gamer who loves those light games, looter games, and every game that involves build making. In this video, I'll be showing my understanding of how to play as Sorcerer in Dragon's Dogma 2. Don't forget to like and subscribe, now let's dive right into it. Let's first have an overlook at this vocation. Sorcerer is a classical glass cannon. It has very strong damage output, a zero supporting ability, or any means to protect itself. This is a ring vocation, which means there's no need for a climbing or knockdown like when you play as a melee vocation, and aiming for a spell is much easier than aiming as an archer. Consequently, the core of Sorcerer is to correctly understand the capability and usage of each spell, and come up with a wise combination given the limit of only 4 skill slots. There won't be anything too complicated regarding control or action. Next, I'll introduce the only thing you need to mind with regard to action, after which we'll be focusing on spells. In Dragon's Dogma, casting a spell doesn't require mana, but only stamina. But as we all know, every vocation consumes stamina to perform skills. So does it mean that there's no difference between performing a spell and a melee skill? Here comes the difference. When you cast a spell, you need to first enchant it. You can choose to consume extra stamina to accelerate enchanting. Since this brings some extra stamina consumption, Sorcerer is also equipped with a core ability to manually speed up stamina recovery. Note that this recovery ability takes some time before your stamina actually starts to recover faster. Therefore, if you use this ability too frequently, you are wasting a lot of time. I recommend only doing faster recovery when your stamina is very low or when you are about to cast many spells without resting. And whenever you start the fast recovery, try to recover to max stamina. This is in fact very easy to master, so let's move to spells. Let me cover some recommended spells among basic spells. Leaven, Frigger, and Salamander. Leaven, or Lightning Strike, is a quite plain and straightforward spell, which makes it really handy. This spell directly creates lightning strikes at the target location, so there's no projectile that might be blocked. And it can hit enemies that are even moving very fast. For example, I rarely miss a strike against Flying Harvest. Frigger, or Ice Lancer, is very rewarding if it hits, but this spell does require some experience of the caster. Frigger does both magic and physical damage, so you don't need another physical spell. It also offers strong knockdown that can send mobs in the air. With such rewarding effect, mastering Frigger is definitely worth the effort. This spell sends forward a projectile which explodes into an ice block when it's near the target. However, this projectile can be blocked. For example, if you stand on a table land and cast this spell to an enemy below this table land, the ice block will explode at the edge instead of the target location. So you need some time to get familiar with this behavior. Both Leaven and Frigger have another advantage. They are both low rank spells, so their enchanting are very short and stamina cost is low. You can use them very flexibly. In fact, I mainly see them as quick reaction spells and always equip the two spells. Salamander, on the other hand, uh, creates a zone of flames, which damages enemies within it. It's a good AoE spell, but not so necessary as Leaven and Frigger. So there isn't too much to say about the other basic spells except for Crazy and Flare. This specific spell deserves a separate section's discussion. So I'll first introduce the two master spells so that you can understand why Presence Flare is the soul of Sorcerer. The first master spell is a tornado that is good at clearing mobs. It's very good at this, but only good at it. Which means you cannot expect it to, to, to be used against giant foes. Meteor, the second master spell, is designed to kill giant foes. However, it cannot accomplish its duty well. 
Besides its limited damage, it has two additional drawbacks. You can't use it in a cave or building as fireballs will hit the ceiling or walls. And it's a fire magic, poor against fire resistant enemies such as dragons. So far, I have recommended two quick reaction spells and two AoE spells. But we still need a good spell to deal huge damage to giant enemies as Meteor fails its job. This is when Prezient Flare is useful. This spell first places a bomb on the enemy, and after that, you need to hit the bomb with other attacks to charge the bomb. The more you charge, the higher the damage. While casting the bomb is simple, charging it can be hard. The worry though as the final damage outcome is definitely worth the price. Furthermore, I personally think that looking for new ways to charge the bomb provides half of the fun of playing as Sorcerer. So far, I have seen three types of methods for charging the bomb. The first choice is to cast Flare first and then accurately attack the bomb. This can be done with Leaven, Flickeration, the basic attack of Sorcerer, or Sagatat, Downpour of Magic Archer when you play as Warfarer. It might be hard to accurately hit the bomb with these spells. The second choice is to first cast a lasting AoE spell and then place the bomb in the area of the AoE spell. You can use Salamander, Tornado, or Hago aka Blazer for this purpose. AoE spells make it very easy to hit the bomb, but these spells, including Tornado, tend to hit the lower parts of a giant enemy, thus unable to charge the bomb that is placed at a very high position. So accurate spells are still useful in some cases. As for the last choice, whenever you have finished charging the bomb, you can let the first bomb charge the successive bombs. In summary, the first two choices are complementary to each other and I recommend using them both. You can choose Leaven as the accurate spell, then for the AoE spell, both Salamander and Tornado are good choices. Choose the one you like. Now that we have finished the analysis on spells, it's time for some views. Of course, gears in Dragon's Dogma 2 are really a quite simple thing, and there's no such a thing as views for gears. So by views, I mean the choice of rings, augments, and spells. For all situations, I recommend one ring of recitation to reduce enchanting time. But it also reduces your max health, so equipping the same ring for the second slot is a quite aggressive and risky choice. You can choose Ring of Articulacy for the second slot instead. Alternatively, the second ring can also be the ring making you immune to silence. For Augments, Subtlety from Thief to avoid being targeted by foes, Max Stamina from Archer, Stamina Recovery from Mage, Magic Attack from Sorcerer itself, Max Weight from Fighter, and perhaps Max Health from Warrior to compensate for the Max Health loss from Reign of Recitation. As for skills, I always use Leaven, Frigger, and Present Flare. The last slot can be either Tornado or Salamander, depending on your preference. I'd also like to talk a bit about skill choice for Pawn Sorcerers. Indeed, Pawns are not clever enough to correctly cast Present Flare, but they can still do it successfully sometimes. And you can help your Pawn charge the bomb once Flare is casted. So, I still tend to use Flare instead of Meteor, as Meteor totally abandons such possibility. But furthermore, for Pawn, Salamander is better than Tornado to be the last spell. Master spells are still too hard for points to use. That's all of my personal understanding on Sorcerer. This is one of the few vocations that can evaporate giant enemies. So even if you yourself are not Sorcerer, it's still a good choice to hire a Sorcerer pawn. If you like my story or want to join me into depth of games, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, see you around.